<coughs> so uh, our next discussion will be about another type of attacks or threats that can affect uh, our security which uh, target the, the weakest chain in the security chain in any organization and what, when do we hear the term of weakest link in the security chain we usually refer to the human layer the human are the weakest part in the security chain because they could be subject to some attacks that could target a human vulnerability such as the interest for example I am interested in or I am curious to know what is on the uh, USB drive that I found on the street so I may take it and, and uh, 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 plug it to the nearest computer that I have authority over it for example I may be uh, able to be exploited somehow so I, I could be blackmailed and based on this blackmail I could be requested or the one who is threatening me could uh, force me to deliver a malware to my organization so social engineering, engineering refer to some attacks or techniques that target the human factor in the security problem so first let's discuss together what is the different kinds or the most common type of social engineering which is the phishing so phishing is an email that is considered as a form of fraud and it can be uh, delivered uh, by someone who pretended to be uh, a huge entity or someone important and this email or uh, this kind of attack usually utilize the email as a media for communication Attacker can, using this email, distribute malicious codes or malicious links or simply try to collect data or extract or harvest kind of data from the victim. And phishing emails usually can include some elements that can help us to detect if this email is legitimate or phishing. One of these, for example, is if I'm receive, receiving an email from someone who pretend to be from Google website or google.com and we need to take care about how Google word is written so we need to ensure that this is really Google uh, or in other words the domain name is sourced from Google this is the first step and second we need also to check the link that he is sharing or she is sharing with us if he is someone from Google, so he should provide a link or a domain that is related to Google website, not garbage domain or garbage URL such as the one here on the screen. In some mail services, we may request or we may find that the email client is giving us a kind of notification to tell us that this email looks suspicious or this email includes some kind of, let's say, uh, signs that uh, maybe support that this email is not a, a good email or is a suspicious or a phishing email for example this email here is not sent to anybody but you received a copy from this email because you are in the bcc or in the hidden carbon copy or in the hidden list of uh, of receivers so there are a lot of people who receive this email and this email is outside of your organization. It could include a kind of attachment or a kind of uh, uh, fancy attachment name such as transaction, such as bank account, such as confidential. So you will be curious to know what is inside this attachment. And usually in phishing emails, we cannot find a malicious code or a malicious virus, but we could get a link that when we open it, we will receive or download a malicious code from any place else. For example, you may get an email, uh, include the link, and in this link, you have an option to send your document to cookie. Do we remember document to cookie and its relation to cross-site scripting? Yeah. So, yeah. In, in this stage or in this situation, you will not receive, let's say you will not receive an email that include uh, in other words that uh, necessarily uh, when you do not open uh, this message uh, or when you you open this link you will be in a problem and example for it as I mentioned maybe the URL itself include a kind of information and this information could leak your information to the hacker some uh, phishing uh, emails 
could only request you to click an email and based on your click to this email the website that you will visit is managed by the hacker or the attacker or the one who sends the phishing email and when you open this email your information such as your browser type your uh, phone if you are using android or apple uh, your ip address so based on uh, based on it i could understand or know what is your current location and something like this okay so in order to protect yourself from the phishing awareness is very important and the first step to instruct your users to not get phished is first to use a strong password and to try to dedicate a password for each service maybe one of the compromised accounts of you on gmail or outlook or yahoo can be used to initiate attacks to your uh, or to your friends or to, to the people you usually uh, deal with so somebody can compromise your account and using your account he can or she can start uh, claiming that you need the money and she requested from your friends to transfer money of it so one of uh, uh, controls to ensure that your accounts or your passwords will not be leaked or, or you will not be subject to such attack is by using a strong password by not by making this password hard to be guessed by change it from time to time and by make it unique for each website you, sh you should understand the phishing techniques and how to uh, avoid being being frauded by fake emails. So you need to understand or you need to practice caution when you open suspicious email. You need to ensure that the domain name of the sender is similar to uh, the uh, what the sender is claiming to be. So he should be google.com not google.com for example this is a way to play with the domain name to look like google but it try actually to uh, make a fraud or do a kind of evasion you need to whenever you uh, receive a link or attachment uh, be cautious when you click this link or attachment if you are suspicious about this email you should report to the information security team or security team avoid the different tricks of the hacker such as when uh, some of the cases hacker may uh, load a malware code on a usb drive and uh, drop it in near of your building or uh, or near of your organization building so maybe there could be a good chance that one of your employee will uh, take this uh, usb drive and will be curious to know what is on this drive so he might uh, connect this usb stick with one of your devices or one of your computer devices in the organization so by blocking usb uh, access on your computers in the organization you can avoid such a trick as well as give this as part of user security awareness okay avoid connecting to public unknown wi-fi such as when you stay at your organization and you find a wi-fi a, a wi-fi hotspot or a network name free access or free internet you need to ensure that this uh, Wi-Fi hotspot is known, which means it is managed by the airport or the train station company or something like this. But I can, from my own device, create a hotspot. And when you connect to this hotspot, you will be subject to man in the middle attack because at the end, your traffic is going to my machine. And I can do a traffic capture for what you are sending. And if you are for any reason, using a non-clear or, or a clear text protocol such as HTTP or Telnet or FTP, I would be able to read this data. Avoid using untrusted USB, CDs. Is Act as in a responsible manner when you are on the internet. Lower your digital fingerprint, which means does not leak too much data about yourself. So you need, uh, for example, on social media, you don't need to mention everything related to your business or related to your organization. Where do you work uh, and what is the key responsibility that you are dealing with? If I am a network security administrator and I said that my uh, uh, courses or my or I, I am familiar with Palo Alto firewall, that will indicate that I use this kind of firewall in day to day basis. So in this situation or in this case, I could have I could have been subject that someone could understand what is my current firewall and will try to find a way to come over this firewall. Okay. 
fine. So for social engineering attacks, we have different kind of attacks. For example, we have the phishing, we have the spear phishing, we will have vishing, and we will have smishing, and we have whaling attack and mining social media. So what all of this is about? First of all, phishing is the email that we just talked about. It is like a random mail that's sent by malicious actor, and he sent this mail in an structured way. He sent it to anyone on the internet, okay? He does not target a specific industry or a specific business or a specific company, unlike the spear phishing. The spear phishing is attacking the email or doing a kind of attack that target a specific institution or a specific business. So I'm targeting people who are working at google.com. So that's an example for spear phishing. Vishing is doing a fraud over the voice call. So I'm calling someone and tell him, hi, I am the bank. Please, me give, please give me your password, your credit card number, and the CVV code written on the uh, back of the credit card. So that is what we do we mean by vishing. And this mission is kind of fraud over SMS, such as I sent you an SMS tells you that your bank account going to be closed. You need to update you, your data. Call me ASAP. Okay, so if you are not aware, you may call uh, the number listed in this SMS message, and then you will start giving this message your data or giving him your data. Uh, whaling is a kind of phishing emails, but it targets executives. It targets the key managers or senior managers in the organization. While mining social media means that hackers use social media to get as much data as they can get about you and your business and your entity. Okay. So information gathering is a technique that we can use to get data about a specific company, and then we can use this data in order to conduct the social engineering attack. One of the examples of information gathering is using a tool called, called Whois. So Whois is a tool that try to collect information about a specific domain. So for example, you can use the Whois domain, which is a tool that you can find on Linux or on Kali Linux. It is already on Kali Linux, if you are asking. And by using Whois tool by uh, with any domain. So for example, here, I am using this tool against the domain called what? YouTube.com. And by using this tool, I can get some of wealthy information about YouTube, such as who was the one who registered this domain? Who is the technical contact responsible for managing this domain? Who is the administrator phone number? Who is the technician or technical team phone number? For domains such as Microsoft or such YouTube, we could have a good proactive measures. This company could have like a contact or a specific contact details that is being used whenever we register a new domain name, correct? But in a small business or in a small organization, maybe the CEO or the founder of the business himself send an email to a company and register his domain information. So they may ask for his, his, his data. So he does not have a mature process in this case. He's, he does not have a specific account for registered DNS name. So he may provide his own email name address. Or, and his own phone number. Okay? This data can be used after then in conducting the social engineering. I know the email address of one of your organization. I can send him an email that related to domain name registration. Okay? So I sent, uh, I sent an email claiming that I am DigiCert uh, GoDaddy, which is uh, something such as DigiCert, the very sign, and so on, and tell him that please send me a payment on this account in order to maintain your certificate or renew your DNS record. It could happen, yeah, of course, it could happen. We have another tool that is also on Kali Linux and it is called Harvester. And as the name implies, Harvester can be used to collect data about a specific domain as well. So Harvester can be used against the domain such as YouTube, and it can export 
data about the YouTube managers or the YouTube domains or something like this. To make it clear to you and just to elaborate it more, we have here Kali Linux. It is somehow closed, sorry. So just let me power on this Kali Linux until I get like a little bit drained. So Harvester is a tool in Kali Linux that do a kind of queries on Google, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on GitHub, on domain uh, tools such as uh, the domain such as the tool uh, such as uh, who is, and based on all of this information, I can get a lot of email addresses that are related to Google, uh, a lot of details that can help me in phishing engineering, uh, phishing attacks. To give you an example, we have LinkedIn, right? And LinkedIn include information about what our current employer. So Harvester can help you by it, it automatically scan LinkedIn accounts. Fine and check who wrote in his current employer the name of organization that I am trying to target. So it can provide you with a list of all employees for on this organization on LinkedIn, as well as if they are declaring these emails or their phone numbers, it will appear as well. So it's a kind of a tool that can bring this data in more meaningful way which can be used after then in conducting attacks. Okay, so what I'm trying to do actually is I'm trying to power on my Kali machine because I didn't I, or I, I forgot to open it uh, before the class, but I believe in Kali machine, this one, the harvester is not working fine. So I'm trying to open a different virtualization software on my device which is called also VMware player, but I will try to open this Kali machine. So the command is the harvester, and I believe this one. So I will just check if the command is working or not. I will say leave it for a while to work. And I just can wait for a few for a minute maximum. So as you can see here, it is now, it's trying to do a lot of searches, but it is not working because I don't have like authorization or I should have some data. So he is now searching and didn't find anything. And then I will leave him working for a while. Search is finished. So as you can see here, a lot of URLs and all of these URLs are related to Microsoft. Can you see this? So if I am a web application penetration tester, I can start to search for vulnerability in, on all of these domains. And all of these domains are related to Microsoft. Some of it could be secured and some of it could, could, could be miss some kind of security which I can check and I can report. Okay. So Harvester tool brought me a lot of links. That's, that's first. And secondly, I could have a list. All of these are URLs related to Microsoft. And secondly, the tool told me that I found some interesting URLs related to Microsoft that you may would like to check. And this is the list of IP addresses related to Microsoft, which can be used as well for any reason. I will try just to uh, select all. File. Or.
So find, for example, I need to find at Microsoft. So here, as you can see, I found like 17 email related to this organization. Of course, there is a lot of emails, but this is the emails that are about people or uh, companies that are published online. Okay. So if in case I had a proper configuration for, the, for this tool, so if you can see here in the, when it was looking for information about LinkedIn, it got like an exception. Okay, so that that might be related to that. I need to uh, do a kind of, of sodo apt update the harvester. So I may would like to update the tool and check if the uh, if the update would solve such issue. or maybe need to download it from the website. So at the end, Harvester is a tool that can help us in gathering information about a specific company that could include IP addresses, list of employees on LinkedIn, or something like this. And based on that, we can use this data in social engineering. Recon NG is another tool that we can use on Kali Linux, and it can help us to do the same. But Recon NG can be more sophisticated and more advanced. Do we remember Metasploit or MSF console? So it was like a framework that helped us to do a kind of uh, exploitation, complete framework to do exploitation. Recon NG is a complete framework that can help us to do social engineering attack or in other words, do reconnaissance, collect data from different sources. Okay. Okay, I believe that concludes the uh, social engineering social engineering part. Okay.